as I mentioned, we're, it's a wonderful day today. We're celebrating the Festival of Tabernacles. And just a story to begin, I remember when I was about a 10-year-old boy, um, I'd gone camping with a number of people, a lot of people camping, and I, we'd, there were a group of us, and we put up, it was a huge marquee. It had a great big pole in the middle. It's a huge marquee. You get loads of people in there. And uh, we, we put up this huge marquee with a bit of difficulty because it's so big. And, um, you know, we'd, there were a number of us sort of in this marquee and other tents and places around as well. In the middle of the, it, in the middle of the night, a little bit like last night here in London, it absolutely downpoured. It was a torrential rain, and I we woke up in the, the middle of the night, and through the middle of this marquee, it was like a a stream flowing right through, affecting everything. I was sleeping on one of those light, you know, blow up lilo things, and I wasn't quite floating on it, but it was nearly there, and. Um, so we, we got up in the middle of the night and we tried to dig a little trench around the outside of the tent to make the water channel away from flowing right through the tent. And, uh, and the wind was getting up as well. And one side of the tent, um, the awning had blown sort of right off and away. So there was just, you could see right through and the rain was coming in. And most sensible people decided to go and camp out in a, a friend's tent or go into the building nearby. Myself and one of two others decided we'd, we'd tough it out. So we, we stayed and tried to get back to sleep, but it was difficult because it was wet and windy and um, yeah, it weren't quite sure if the tent even was gonna hold up, although it, it just about half did. And the reason for telling you that story is this. We're celebrating today and it's a seven day um, festival, the, the festival of tabernacles. And really the, the, the right word isn't tabernacle. The tabernacle was the place where, um, if you like, the precursor to the temple. So it was like the place where God revealed himself to people of Israel. So actually the word here isn't so much, it's not so much the festival of tabernacles, that sort of tabernacle. There's a different word for that. Actually, it's the festival of really temporary shelters. Sometimes it's called the festival of booze, but probably the best way of describing it, and the actual word itself means uh, a temporary shelter. Uh, it can literally mean branches. So what we're thinking about, and I'd just like to make several points about the festival of tabernacles. And the first one is this. The first point is this. Remember to always be dependent upon God. Remember to always be dependent, completely dependent upon God. Levit Leviticus 23, 42 says this, and this is a command from the Lord in, in the Old Testament. It says, live in booze, or sometimes slightly not quite rightly tabernacles, really it would best say temporary shelters, live in temporary shelters, booze, for seven days. All native born Israelites are to live in booze, uh, so that your descendants will know that I made the Israelites live in booths, temporary shelters, when I brought them out of Egypt. I wanted you just to try and imagine for a minute um, that you are one of the people of Israel and you are spending 40 years in the wilderness, in the desert. Just imagine what that must have been like for the people of Israel to spend 40 years, 40 years in a bleak, barren desert. What would that have, how would you have survived that? How would I have survived that? You see, the desert is a dangerous place. There are snakes, there are scorpions, there are wild animals. The desert is a dangerous place. It's an inhospitable place. The desert is a vulnerable place. It's a place if you're in a desert, and especially if you're in a desert for 40 years, you are vulnerable. Uh, you are, anything can happen. You're at high risk. Uh, it's not really a safe place. Uh, you've got almost no resources. It's a difficult place to be. It's a vulnerable place. A desert is a place of extremes, extreme temperature, incredibly hot during the day, and sometimes cold at night. It's a place of extremes. Uh, and perhaps supremely for the people of Israel, it's a place of testing. The desert, the wilderness is a place of testing. 
how would you have gone on? How would I have gone on if we had been one of those people for 40 years in the desert? But, you know, as I make these points, we're going to see that God was with them every split second that they were in that wilderness desert place. He never left their side. He was with them, as we'll see, constantly. And, you know, the lessons that the people of Israel had to learn in the desert are exactly the same lessons that God wants you and I to learn today in 2020. And you see, in the, in the desert, God was, had got the people of Israel together. together. Um, they were traveling together. They were together in all that they were doing. And God was beginning to mold and build the people of God, the nation of Israel, the people of Israel. It was an incredible time. And it was so important a time that actually after 40 years, when they came out into um, the promised land and suddenly instead of living in temporary shelters, literally with a couple of branches and maybe a couple of planks of wood for protection, uh, um, probably much less than I had in that tent that was sort of blowing away in the wind uh, you know, a long time ago. God, it was such a significant time. It was such a discipling time it was such a building time it's such a key time for the people of Israel that when they got into the promised land God said for seven days every year every year live in a temporary shelter so in the desert they didn't have permanent buildings they didn't have bricks and mortar they had literally branches and a couple of planks of wood for 40 years and God says I want you for one day well, sorry, for one week, seven days every year to go back now that you're in, you know, the promised land and live in a temporary shelter, because that will remind you that will give you a wake up call that will remind you about how I was with your forefathers in the desert and how I was with them and how I molded them and how I led them. And if we will learn the lessons from the Festival of Tabernacles, I tell you, we will we will be drawing so close to God. So does that make some sense? That's that's what would it have been like? How would you have got on? How would I have got on in, in the wilderness? And the key, key lesson, which is my first point, I've already made it, is that God was teaching them to be totally dependent upon God. And the lesson that they had to learn for 40 years living in temporary shelters is the lesson that God wants to teach you and I today as well. Are you, am I a Christian, a follower of Jesus who is totally dependent upon God, totally dependent upon God for everything and anything? Yes or no? Are we? Because that is the challenge. That is the, the, the call of God upon your life and mine is to be someone who lives totally dependent upon God totally dependent we you know many live in houses or flats or homes where we've got electricity we've got running water we've got a bed we've got a, a permanent covering over our head and you know it's so easy to start forgetting God and leaving God out of the equation and just thinking that we're all right we've got a good education we've got a money's coming in whatever actually God says no remember that you are always whatever your circumstances completely dependent upon me and Edith's prophecy earlier on was actually all of us need to remember this key, key lesson in our lives. How dependent am I on God or not? Uh, and that was the key, key lesson that, uh, that God was teaching them. So that was the first point. Second point um, that the Festival of Tabernacles teaches us is this. Remember that God alone is your deliverer. God alone is your deliverer. Exodus 14 and verse 13 says this, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you'll see the deliverance the Lord your God will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So this is going back bef just before the people of Israel crossed over the Red Sea and came into the desert. What had happened? Well, the people of Israel had spent 400 years in slavery. They'd been discriminated against. They'd been used and abused. They'd been enslaved. They, their lives had been made a misery. Uh, it was almost impossible those 400 years. How do they get delivered from their, their, their slavery? There's one person and it's God. 
God is their deliverer. God leads them out of Egypt, the Red Sea parts, and they cross over into the um well, into Sinai, into the, that, that wilderness desert area. But they are free. They might be in the desert, but for the first time, for 400 years, they're free. God has delivered them. God has broken through for them. God has brought them through and brought them out of all that they've been suffering and going through. the festival of tabernacles and living in a temporary shelter the the hebrew word is sukkah uh, that's a singular sukkot is a plural why sometimes also the hebrew word for feast of tabernacles will be sukkot the feast of a uh, sukkot uh, sukkot is basically means a booze or and uh, a sukkah is a, a single booze whatever so why are they to live for seven days every year in a temporary shelter even though now they they've got you know, a permanent roof over their head is so that God wants them not to forget all that he's taught them. And, you know, as Christians, it's so easy to forget what God's taught them. It's so easy to begin to get a little bit, mm, I don't really need God in my deliverer. I think I can sort this out myself. They learned the lesson that God alone is their deliverer. And that's the lesson uh, that, that God wants to teach you and me today. And if there are any areas where you or I are needing breakthrough in our lives, deliverance from something, God alone is our deliverer. We can look to people, we can look to organizations, we can look to institutions, we can look to different places. But the lesson that the people of Israel and you and I have to learn is God alone is our deliverer. God alone. There is no one else. There's no institution, organization, movement apart from God alone who can deliver you and bring you into the freedom that only God can give. And that is the lesson they learned. And um, that's the second point. Third point. Um, that the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles um, or Temporary Shelters reminds, of, reminds us of is this. God is your provider. God is your provider. So you can see what happened in Exodus 16 and verse 4. It says this. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. And in Exodus 16, 13, it says that evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in Exodus 17, we see that I will stand by the rock of Horeb, strike the rock and water will come out and, uh, uh, for people to drink. Do you know, again, remember, imagine you're one of those people for 40 years, you've been in the desert. But hey, here's the upside to it. You've got no food bills for the next 40 years. You're shopping. You're, you don't have to budget for that. You haven't got to go down to Aldi and, you know, you know, pick up whatever bits and pieces, you know, regularly. For 40 years, 40 years, God provided for all that the people of Israel needed. He provided food. And the food he provided, it was it's called manna. It was the most nutritious succulent, had everything, vitamins, uh, trace elements that you could possibly have needed. God provided all the food they needed, but because they thought, mm, this bread's a bit samey, can we have something different? God gave them quail as well. So do you know what quail is like? I Maybe you've tried a quail once. I don't know. I've never had a eaten quail, but um, quail tastes pretty much like chicken, a gamey sort of chicken. God gave the people of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years manna, this... this um, honey like bread and and quail chicken i don't know if it was jerk chicken or how they cooked it or whatever they did with it but do you know what they had this wonderful heavenly bread and chicken and they had all that they needed god provided for them for 40 years no food bills wow isn't that amazing um and and god was teaching them that they needed to look to him to be their provider because they had to go out every day and gather the manna. So every day, gosh, if God doesn't actually come through today and there's no manna, we're going to be we're going to be stuffed. But actually, God came through every day, 40 years, providing for them all that they needed. And the lesson that you and I need to learn is equally God is your provider. God is my provider. Don't look 
to anyone else ultimately to provide for you apart from God alone. Get to that place of complete dependency that he's your provider. And yes, we might get money from the state. We might get a, a check or income from uh, a job or employment or, or something like that. And praise God for that. Um, but actually, we need to see all provision as ultimately coming from God himself. And, you know, you might look around your house and maybe if you're fortunate, you can open your fridge and it's full of food and everything like that. In the wilderness, they didn't have that luxury of fridges and freezers and things like that. They had to trust God on a daily basis for every mouthful. And it's a reminder to live in a temporary shelter for seven days every year. Do you know what? Um, most um, committed Jewish people will do that. They will literally build a temporary shelter on the side of their house um, made of just a few branches and, uh, and not much else, and they will live in it and sleep in it for seven days every year. And I think it's the fantastic visual aid object lesson. And let me tell you, if you and I especially last night, were to live in a temporary shelter for seven days, it would give us a bit of a wake-up call and would get us to really look at ourselves and think, how are we doing in our walk, our walk with God? Are we trusting him? It's a reminder that God is our uh, provider. And uh, so that's the third point. Um, fourth point is this. Feast of Tabernacles remind us, reminds us God is your guide. God is your guide. God is your leader. It says in Exodus 13, 21, by day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night, a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Wow. For 40 years, God was ever present with the people of Israel. They could look up in the daytime, the cloud of God's presence was there. They could look at nighttime when it was dark, the pillar of fire is there. They knew that God's presence was with them. God never left their side, not for a moment, not for a moment. And, you know, sadly, for some of the people of Israel, they... They took their eyes off God. They got a bit complacent with the provision that was coming every day. And they started to moan and grumble and criticize Moses. And, you know, sadly, a lot of those people didn't actually make it all the way through um, to the promised land. Um, and they, they got a bit sort of, God, you know, why we want this, we want that, or why this and why that. And they mumbled and groaned. And we need to be careful of that because um, they, they just weren't quite happy that, with God's provision for them or they weren't it wasn't quite being done how they wanted God uh, to do things so we need to be careful where we try and control God as to exactly what we want him to do we need to allow him to be our leader and our guide and God would led them every moment of every day they followed him they had to look to him and they had to learn over 40 years as God was molding this people into his um, the people of God, they had to learn to keep their eyes fixed upon Jesus. They had to learn to keep their eyes fixed upon God. They had to le learn to keep their eyes fixed upon that pillar of fire and that cloud of God's presence. And they learned to keep in step with God. Living in a temporary shelter for seven days every year is a great reminder to remember that God is our guide. God is our leader. God is the one that we look to. And our verse for the year is, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, which is a, a good challenge for all of us. So what did they do? They, had, they, they spent time with God. How's my time with God? How's your time with God? I would say, get alone with God. And this Feast of Tabernacles, seven days, get alone with God, get into God's presence and look to him, listen to him, just spend time being in his presence, not necessarily doing anything, but hearing from him, growing closer to him. And, um, and God will meet with you. He met with the people of Israel. He wants to meet with you. He keeps his appointment with us. Do we keep our appointment with God? People of Israel, in a sense, had no option but to do that for 40 years, but they learned how to follow God. 
during that time. But God knew that they might forget. And that's why the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Temporary Shelters, uh, was set up as a, as a lasting command is to, 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 to just not forget the lessons that God teaches us. So though there are more points I could make. I could, we can make the point that God is our healer because God healed people from their sicknesses in the desert. And many other points that we could pick up from uh, lessons to learn from the wilderness. But just one final point, and I'll just draw things together with this. And this is where I'm linking in just a little bit now with gift day, because there is a natural link between Sukkot, Tabernacles and, and gift day for us. Fifth and final point is this. Remember to bring a gift to God. Remember to bring a gift to God. Deuteronomy 16 verse 17 puts it like this. No one should appear before the Lord empty handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. It's interesting here. God doesn't give the people of Israel an option about whether or not they want to bring a gift to God. It's a command. You must bring a gift. It wasn't just at this time, actually. It was three times a year. Uh, they were commanded to bring a gift to God. Um, and this is something that God was saying to them. So, and, and basically, he was saying this, look, I'm your deliverer. I'm your ever-present um, God. I'm your provider. I'm the God who is with you. I'm your deliverer. And I want you to bring uh, an offering of thanks, of gratitude, of appreciation uh, for my presence with you. Um, and the gift that God was wanting to see them give was, if you like, he wanted to see in the people of God an expression of thanks and gratitude to God. And that is why God says uh, in this passage, uh, or you know, this point, you know, bring a gift to God. Um, you know, don't appear empty handed. But the, what I love about this, it says, bring a gift in proportion to how God has blessed you. So if we've got a, a millions, then our gift is going to be bigger. If we're stru struggling and scratching, then our gift is going to be much smaller. It's not a one same gift for everyone. It's a gift in proportion to how God has blessed us. That is what uh, Deuteronomy 16 and verse 17 says. And do you remember Jesus when he was watching uh, the temple and there was a, an elderly widow and she came along and she just put two very small copper coins into the offering. And Jesus said, you know, other people have given, given, but she had put in more than any because in proportion to how God has blessed her, she put in pretty much everything she had. And God commends her for that. It's not the amount that is key, but there's a sense of giving in proportion to how God has blessed us. And that's a challenge for all of us to do that and to be willing to do that. Um, and that's perhaps where, well, it is the way where tabernacles and gift day fit together. Our encouragement once a year is to consider giving a, a one-off offering gift to God. There's no compulsion. There's no arm twist. There's no half Nelson to do so. Um, God doesn't operate like that. And we as a church certainly don't want to either. But we do want to see what God's written in his word and just give an opportunity where we encourage people to consider giving a one-off gift just to help with the running of the church, the ministry, the costs, the expenses, uh, and all of those sort of things. And, uh, you know, for the missionary work, both here and beyond that that uh, God wants to, to do through you and through me, through Annie Team Ministry. And also, we use this opportunity gift day as an opportunity for us, you know, once a year, just to review our giving, just to make sure that we, you know, we're on track and we haven't sort of um, neglected, if you like. So that's, that's where tabernacles and gift day come together. I hope that makes sense. So again, there's no compulsion for anyone to have to give anything. But I'm just read the fifth point remember to bring a gift to god that is something that god encouraged us to do um, at tabernacles in fact three times a year uh, and those you know to do that and so today it's appropriate on gift day as well so how would you get on i wonder if you had to live in a sukkah in a temporary little booth which would be a little more than a couple of planks of wood and some branches over your head for seven days a year just imagine you had to do that let me tell you if you did that and and most good jews will do their best 
to do that for seven days. And OK, the climate in Israel might be a little bit better than in the UK. Um, and in fact, I'll be honest with you, once or twice, and I will um, once or twice across the, the, the tabernacles, I've actually just put up a little tent in the garden. That's not that's not a proper uh, temporary dwelling. It's made of canvas and whatever else. It gives a lot of protection. But actually just going out and putting a little tent out for a couple of days when I've done that and I've done that in the past um, times actually it seems gosh you know yeah I'm just doing a flimsy canvas there's not much around I haven't got everything else and actually I found that God's really spoken to me when I've sought to, 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 to do that so to recap five points remember always to be dependent upon God remember God alone is your deliverer Remember, God is your provider. Remember, God is your guide. He's your leader. He's your constant helper and companion. And remember, to bring a gift to God in proportion to how God has blessed you. So five points for us to um, pray about, think about as we respond to God now. And I'm just going to allow a, a moment of quiet just for us to, to do our own um, quiet time with God. It uh, might be that God wants to speak to you, to minister to you in some way. It might be in the area of giving a gift. And maybe that's always a challenge for us. We find it difficult. We haven't quite broken through on, you know, being generous or a spirit of generosity. It might be that God needs to, needs to um, you know, wants to speak to us in that area. It might be that God wants to speak to you about his presence and he's challenging you and me about the, the amount of time or maybe the lack of time that we really spend in tending the presence of God. 40 years for the people of Israel. It might be that God is speaking to us about a breakthrough, his breakthrough deliverance in some area of our, of our lives where we need to see a breakthrough. And that's an area we want to receive from God. It might be in the area of provision. Maybe we are struggling. Maybe COVID has been a really hard time for us and we've got less than we've had before, not more. And we're struggling to try and make ends meet. Um, and we need to look to God and remember that God is our provider. And as well as looking to whatever other sources we might have, we need to remember to look to God, to be our um, Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh Yireh, uh, the God who provides for us. It might be that we need a, his healing touch upon our lives. God is our healer. Um, so let's just be quiet. I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and move and minister where you are. Um, you might want to close your eyes, just get quiet in God's presence. And I'm going to pray. Father, I just pray, come now, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and minister and touch each and every one of us, Lord, as we just dwell in your presence right now for a moment as we reflect on what you're saying to us as we reflect on what you're wanting to speak into our lives holy spirit come and move in our hearts come and move in our minds lord god come and move in our bodies wherever we might need healing lord god i pray move by the power of your holy spirit and bring healing, we pray. I pray for a release of healing for anyone in need of a healing touch from God this morning. I pray for a release of provision for anyone struggling at this time to, to have enough. Uh, Lord, I pray for breakthrough in terms of provision. You provide for the people of Israel. Would you provide for anyone in acute need right now, Lord God, in Jesus' name? I pray for breakthrough, Lord God, wherever that is needed in lives, maybe in our minds, in our a situation we're going through, Lord God. I pray you are the God of the breakthrough. You're our deliverer. Bring us through those, those um, valleys and difficult times, Lord God. Lord, I pray you might also touch our possessions, our wallets, our finances as well, and that we would remember that everything we have, much or little, it comes from you, Lord God. And may we be willing to be generous uh, in terms of expressing our thanks and praise and worship to you, Lord God, in the proportion to the way that you have blessed us, Lord God. So Father, 
move by your spirit in our lives. Thank you for your presence with us now. And Lord, we just commit and consecrate ourselves to you afresh this day. In Jesus' name. Amen.